Now we move on to the first of two parts for Japan. The southern half of the country is more susceptible to storms than in the north, with warm sea surface temperatures bordering the south coast. Significant storms have struck the region in the past. Initially, the feature was going to be divided into southern and northern, though instead it's been split up into two because most storms that arrive in northern Japan have crossed the south first. Since 1950, southern Japan has seen 264 cyclones. Of these, 122 were tropical storms, 82 Category 1 typhoons, 40 Category 2 storms, 17 Category 3 typhoons, 2 intense Category 4 storms, and 1 catastrophic Category 5 super typhoon landfall. The costliest storm was Typhoon Mireille in 1991, causing $10 billion in damages. Vera in 1959 was the deadliest, killing over 5,000. The last storm to make landfall was Man Yi earlier this year. In September 1958, a tropical depression formed in the western Pacific towards the east of the Mariana Islands. The system progressed towards the west, developing quickly into a tropical storm Ida, passing close to Guam before becoming a typhoon as it began to move clear. The storm then moved just south of west for a while, attaining Category 3 intensity just 36 hours after forming, and kept this intensity for the next two days as it began to turn towards the northwest. Ida then began to intensify again, this time peaking as a powerful and very intense Category 5 super typhoon, with sustained winds estimated at 200 miles per hour and a central air pressure of 877 millibars. Ida then continued towards the north, maintaining Category 5 intensity for nearly two days before weakening as it began to approach Japan. Though it was weakening considerably from this point onwards, Ida made landfall in Kanagawa as a Category 3 typhoon and emerged on the other side of Honshu as it transitioned into an extratropical storm. Ida moved towards the north-northeast, brushing the island of Hokkaido before moving out to sea. Ida caused heavy rainfall of up to 30 inches on the Itsu Islands and 17 inches reported in Tokyo. The main damaging effect from the storm was heavy rain, causing flooding and nearly 2,000 separate landslides estimated. More than half a million homes were washed out by flooding, with over 4,000 damaged beyond repair. Damages from the storm resulted in $50 million, with a death toll of 1,269. In September 1959, a year to the day since Typhoon Ida was first named, a tropical depression formed in a similar region to the east of the Mariana Islands. The system quickly developed into Tropical Storm Vera and moved towards the northwest this time, developing into a typhoon in less than a day. From here, Vera strengthened quickly and became an intense Category 5 typhoon, an intensity it would hold for over three days. The storm peaked with sustained winds of 190 miles per hour and a central pressure of 895 millibars. Halfway between the Mariana Islands and the Japanese mainland, Vera was moving towards the northwest and gradually turned towards the north, maintaining Category 5 intensity all the way until making its landfall in the Kansai region of Japan. Vera quickly weakened from its devastating landfall intensity, but remained a Category 2 typhoon as it made another landfall in northern Honshu, turning extratropical just southeast of Hokkaido. Striking with sustained winds of 160 miles per hour and inevitably higher gusts, Vera also caused a strong storm surge, which decimated coastal areas. In all, the storm resulted in the deaths of over 5,200, with a further 32,000 injured and 1.5 million homeless. Damages from the storm amounted to $261 million at the time. In early September 1961, a tropical storm was noted west of the Marshall Islands and was named Nancy. Quickly intensifying, the storm attained typhoon status not long after it was first observed, and just over a day later, Nancy had attained Category 5 Super Typhoon intensity. The storm continued in this fashion for five days, as it moved generally west-northwest at first, turning more towards the northwest as it passed south of Guam. Soon after, the storm peaked with sustained winds estimated at 215 miles per hour, and a central pressure of 882 millibars. The storm now approached the Ryukyu Islands and lost Category 5 intensity just as it made its closest approach to Okinawa. The Amami Islands, however, suffered a direct hit from Nancy, with the storm crossing directly over the area as a Category 4 typhoon. Nancy continued to weaken, moving towards the northeast now, striking Shikoku as a Category 2 storm and then Honshu at or near this intensity too. The storm, now accelerating in forward motion, remained a typhoon as it crossed Honshu and then Hokkaido at pace and weakened into a tropical storm as it crossed the southeastern extremity of Sakhalin, Russia. Nancy finally turned extra-tropical shortly before striking the Kamchatka Peninsula. In Guam, Nancy passed fairly close as a Category 5 typhoon, resulting in damage to agriculture and transportation networks, particularly in the south. Okinawa suffered heavy flooding, causing significant damage, though no fatalities. On the Amami Islands, the storm caused more flooding here, damaging a number of buildings and causing a single fatality. 
On the Japanese main islands, over 40,000 houses were damaged or destroyed, with nearly 300,000 more flooded. The storm caused 189 fatalities, over 3,000 injuries, and damages of over half a billion dollars. In early October 1979, a tropical depression formed between the Micronesian states of Pompeii and Chuk, slightly to the south, and remained undecided on its course for a number of days in the region. The system generally edged towards the northwest for the next three days or so, strengthening to become Tropical Storm Tip whilst it did so, before passing close to Chuck as it began to move in earnest towards the northwest. Tip gradually intensified as it curved towards the west and passed just south of Guam before becoming a typhoon. Tip continued towards the west or west-northwest, continuing gradual intensification and was two days later a Category 5 Super Typhoon. On October 12th, Typhoon Tip set a record for being the most intense tropical cyclone ever recorded, and indeed the lowest air pressure ever recorded on Earth at 870 millibars. Along with this were its sustained winds of 190 miles per hour and a record large diameter of nearly 1400 miles. After two days at Category 5 intensity, Tip began to weaken again, but held on as a Category 4 Typhoon for three more days as it gradually moved towards the west and west-northwest. Tip then turned towards the northwest, passing close to the Ryukyu Islands as a weakening typhoon, and striking Honshu as a Category 1 storm before turning extratropical. Tip caused heavy rainfall in Guam, though no known losses occurred here. In Japan, the storm caused strong winds and heavy rain, resulting in hundreds of mudslides and the flooding of over 20,000 buildings. In total, the storm killed 99 with heavy but undetermined amounts of damage in Japan. In July 1982, a tropical depression formed over the Marshall Islands, and after nearly two days gradually moving towards the northwest, it was named Bess. Bess continued in this fashion, steadily intensifying and building, becoming a typhoon as it began to turn towards the west. The storm then veered southwest and tracked somewhat aquatically for a short time, before moving back towards the northwest and continuing its intensification. Best peaked as a Category 5 typhoon just over a day later, with sustained winds of 160 miles per hour and a central pressure of around 900 millibars. The storm began to weaken near Iwo Jima and turned towards the north eventually, striking Japan just before losing typhoon intensity. The storm crossed Honshu and turned post-tropical over the Sea of Japan in early August. In Japan, heavy rainfall resulted in well over a thousand landslides, mostly in Honshu, where nearly 30,000 buildings were flooded. Over a hundred bridges were also washed out, and agricultural losses also occurred. In total, the storm caused 95 fatalities and damages of $2.32 billion. And now the second part of the region of the Japanese mainland. Most storms that end up over northern Japan have made landfall further south first and are often weaker or in the process of turning extratropical by now. However, this region can also be significantly affected by typhoons at times. Since 1950, northern Japan has seen 62 cyclone landfalls, 44 of which are tropical storm intensity, 16 Category 1 typhoons and only 2 Category 2 storms. Due to lack of clarity between damages and fatalities in this region as opposed to the whole of the mainland, it is unknown which storm was the costliest or deadliest here. The last storm to make landfall was Tropical Storm Songda in 2004, though Kirogi last year may have made landfall while still tropical. In September 1990, a tropical depression formed over the southern Marshall Islands and proceeded towards the west-northwest, turning due west after two days without intensifying. The disturbance continued to trek westwards, passing near Chuk as it began to turn northwest and pass through the southern Mariana Islands. Tropical Storm Flo was named half a day after clearing the islands and continued towards the northwest, gaining typhoon intensity two days later and continued to intensify from here. Flo approached the Ryukyu Islands and became an intense storm, peaking as a Category 5 super typhoon with sustained winds of 165 miles per hour and a central pressure of 890 millibars just east of Okinawa. The storm held this intensity for only 12 hours before weakening as it passed the Amami Islands. Flo continued to gradually weaken but still struck Honshu, Japan as a Category 2 typhoon and emerged out of the northeastern coast of the island as a tropical storm. Flo continued out to sea, dissipating near the Rat Islands of Alaska. The storm first affected Okinawa, causing heavy rain here and typhoon force winds. Power outages were reported on many of the Ryukyu Islands and caused landslides which killed 11 on the Mami Island. Flo moved onto the main islands of Japan where most of the damage occurred. In total, the typhoon caused 50 fatalities, 90 injuries and $4 billion in damages. 
Just over a year later, in September 1991, a tropical depression formed to the northeast of the Marshall Islands and kept a steady heading just north of west for two days before becoming Tropical Storm Mireille. Mireille continued towards the west, turning northward slightly as it gained typhoon intensity. The storm veered back towards the south and eventually passed through the Mariana Islands just before strengthening into a Category 2 storm. Mireille continued west-southwest and after a day or two more curved towards the northwest, intensifying again by now. Mireille peaked as a strong Category 4 super typhoon with sustained winds of 150 miles per hour and a central pressure of 925 millibars and was a Category 4 storm for four days, on the final day passing just east of Miyakojima and into the East China Sea. Mireille then weakened but still struck northern Kyushu as a Category 2 typhoon and held the status as it passed over the island and then over the southwesterly extremity of Honshu. The storm accelerated over the Sea of Japan, crossing Hokkaido just before turning extratropical. Its remnants continued towards the northeast, dissipating over the Bering Sea. Mireille affected Japan and South Korea, causing four deaths in the latter. Though Japan bore the brunt of the storm and suffered widespread damage and disruption from Mireille. In total, Mireille caused 66 fatalities and damages amounting to $10 billion, remaining to this day Japan's costliest typhoon. In late September 2002, a tropical depression formed north of the Marshall Islands and moved towards the west, strengthening to become Tropical Storm Higos after two days. The storm continued towards the west-northwest and approached the northernmost Mariana Islands as it became a typhoon. Higos continued out into open waters, where it peaked as a strong Category 4 super typhoon with sustained winds of 155 miles per hour and a central pressure of 930 millibars as it turned towards the north. With course now set for Japan, Higos gradually weakened and made landfall near Yokosuka as a Category 1 typhoon. The storm weakened as it crossed the length of the northern half of Honshu and made another landfall in Hokkaido as it weakened into a tropical storm. Higos washed out over 2,000 homes with flooding and damaged nearly 3,000. Strong winds left millions without power. In Sakhalin, Russia, the storm caused six injuries and killed seven others offshore Primorsky Krai. Total fatalities from the storm amounted to 12, with damages of over $2 billion, mainly in Japan. In late August 2007, a tropical depression formed over the open Pacific waters and proceeded towards the north-northeast, developing quickly into tropical storm Fito. The next day, Fito was a typhoon and turned towards the west-northwest for a day and a half before dipping towards the south a little. Fito, not gaining strength, continued towards the west, passing close to the Ogasawara Islands, and then curved towards the north, passing by the Itsu Island chain, and then striking Honshu as a Category 1 storm, an intensity it had held for the past week. Fito weakened over land and turned post-tropical just before reaching Hokkaido. The storm caused flooding and strong winds, resulting in power outages for over 80,000 people. Significant damage occurred from over 500 landslides and buildings which were battered by strong winds. Flooding also occurred in some parts of Russia, though no fatalities were reported here. The death toll in Japan reached three and damages amounted to $1 billion. In late September 2009, a tropical depression formed between the Marshall Islands and Pompeii Micronesia and soon developed into Tropical Storm Milor. The system continued towards the northwest before moving somewhat erratically as it quickly intensified from a tropical storm to a Category 4 typhoon in the space of 24 hours. Milor kept its intensity to pass through the Mariana Islands before intensifying further to become a Category 5 super typhoon over open waters. Milor peaked with sustained winds of 175 miles per hour and a central pressure of 910 millibars. As it began to weaken, Milor turned towards the northwest and passed close to the Dayato Islands and close enough to the Amami Islands to cause inclement conditions. Milor struck Honshu as a Category 1 typhoon and soon turned extratropical over land. The storm then moved out to sea and dissipated well south of the Aleutian Islands. The storm caused sporadic power outages on the Mariana Islands, but caused more significant damage in Japan. In total, the storm caused three fatalities and damages of $1.5 billion. Now we enter the Indian Ocean and begin on the island of Sri Lanka. Whilst many storms have formed out in the Bay of Bengal to its east, not many have actually posed a real risk to the nation. Indeed, since 1972, only five cyclones have made landfall here. 
Three were tropical storms and two were Category 1 hurricane equivalent cyclones. No storms stronger than this have made landfall on record. The costliest cyclone is not known here, though the deadliest is believed to be Cyclone Nisha in 2008, which caused 15 fatalities. This storm was also the most recent to make landfall in Sri Lanka. In December 2000, a tropical depression formed in the southern Bay of Bengal between Indonesia and Sri Lanka. The system slowly moved towards the west-northwest and developed into an unnamed tropical storm on Christmas Day. The storm was still slow moving and tracked ever closer to Sri Lanka, where it made landfall just as it became a Category 1 cyclone. The storm then began to progressively weaken over land and then over the Gulf of Manar and made a second landfall as a weak tropical storm near the southern tip of India, quickly dissipating. In Trincomalee, near where the storm made landfall, significant damage and flooding occurred, destroying nearly 7,000 homes. Elsewhere in the storm's path, significant damage occurred, resulting in the deaths of up to 17 people. Damage totals are unknown, though over 80,000 buildings were completely destroyed. In late November 2008, a tropical depression formed along the coast of northern Sri Lanka and after spending a day over this area, the system developed into tropical storm Nisha and moved towards the northeast, then back towards the north and northwest as it paralleled the coast of India. The storm made landfall in Tamil Nadu and dissipated halfway through its passage over the country. In Sri Lanka, Nisha caused the displacement of nearly 100,000 people, mainly due to flooding. Here, 15 fatalities also occurred. In India, the human cost was larger, with 189 fatalities reported here, mainly due to flooding. In total, the storm caused damages of $800 million. Now we move on to the eastern coast of India and the cyclone-prone states of Andhra Pradesh, Odisha and West Bengal. This area is one of the most vulnerable in the Indian Ocean to cyclone landfalls, along with Bangladesh to the east and a fair number of strong storms have made landfall in the past. Since 1972, 67 cyclones have made landfall here, 48 of these were tropical storms, 10 Category 1 cyclones, 2 at Category 2 intensity, 3 Category 3 equivalent storms, 3 intense Category 4 cyclones and a single storm making landfall as a powerful Category 5 cyclone. The costliest storm was 5B in 1999, causing losses of $4.5 billion. The deadliest was either 6B in 1977 or 5B in 1999, with over 14,000 fatalities apiece. The last storm to make landfall was Tropical Depression Lihar just this week. In mid-November 1977, a tropical depression formed somewhere to the west of Sumatra, Indonesia and moved westwards for two days before reaching hurricane intensity. The unnamed cyclone turned towards the northwest, gradually intensifying all the way until peaking as a Category 3 storm with sustained winds of at least 125 miles per hour and a central pressure of 919 millibars. The storm maintained its intensity and struck Andhra Pradesh as a Category 3 cyclone. The storm then moved inland and dissipated. The worst of the storm's effects occurred near the Krishna River Delta, where storm surge caused thousands of fatalities, particularly on the Delta Island of Divisima. Not much better conditions were reported on the mainland coast near the landfall area. The storm caused a total of 14,204 fatalities, though it is possible that the total was substantially higher. Monetary losses amounted to nearly half a billion dollars at the time. In November 1989, Typhoon Gay arrived in India after forming in the Western Pacific and caused significant damage near the landfall area, striking as a compact Category 5 cyclone. Winds gust to 200 miles per hour with an 11-foot storm surge in Andhra Pradesh. 20,000 homes were damaged or completely destroyed, and the storm caused 69 fatalities in the country. Total damages amounted to just over $25 million. Just a few months later, in May 1990, a tropical depression formed in the central Bay of Bengal and did not develop further for nearly two days. Moving slowly towards the west-northwest, the system intensified to become an unnamed tropical storm and became a Category 1 cyclone two days later as it began to approach the eastern coast of India. The storm then turned towards the north and continued to intensify, peaking as a Category 4 cyclone with sustained winds of 145 miles per hour and a central pressure of 920 millibars not far offshore. The storm then made landfall in Andhra Pradesh just as it weakened into a Category 2 storm and dissipated two days later, far inland. 
Over 150,000 were evacuated, though still 967 lost their lives to the storm. Total damages amounted to $600 million, with most of it being surge and flooding related. In early October 2013, a tropical depression formed in the Andaman Sea and became Tropical Storm Phelan just before passing over the northernmost extent of the Andaman Islands. A day later, Phelan reached winds of hurricane force and rapidly intensified from here, becoming a Category 5 cyclone 36 hours later, peaking with sustained winds of 160 miles per hour and a central pressure near 918 millibars. The storm now threatened the coast of India, and whilst the worst-case scenario was anticipated, the storm did begin to weaken before making landfall in Odisha. Phelan dissipated a day later inland. Over 130,000 were evacuated in Andhra Pradesh, where heavy rain and strong winds caused losses of power. There was also one fatality and $8 million in damages here. In Odisha State, most of the storm's destruction occurred, where winds of 120 miles per hour battered the coastline. There were 44 fatalities in the state and damages of nearly $700 million. Now we move on to the other side of the Bay of Bengal, an area that doesn't see quite as many cyclones, but have nonetheless had some devastating ones, some in recent years. The nations of Bangladesh and Myanmar occupy this region, and large parts of it are densely populated. Since 1972, 38 cyclones have made landfall along this stretch of coastline. 22 were tropical storms, 7 Category 1 cyclones, 2 Category 2 storms, 2 Category 3 cyclones, and 5 intense Category 4 equivalent cyclones. The costliest storm was a tie between 2B in 1991 and Cyclone Sidur in 2007, both causing $1.7 billion in damages. The deadliest storm was known as the Bola Cyclone in 1970, where up to half a million people lost their lives. The last storm to make landfall was Cyclone Mahassan earlier this year. In November 1970, a tropical depression formed over the central Bay of Bengal and proceeded northwards. Whilst exact intensities are unknown until landfall, the storm likely gradually intensified as it moved towards the north and north-northeast and approached the coasts of India and Bangladesh as a Category 2 or 3 cyclone. The storm made landfall near its peak intensity with sustained winds of 115 miles per hour and a central pressure around 966 millibars. Striking at high tide, the storm caused unprecedented damage and loss of life on Bola Island and the surrounding area, where nearly all buildings were destroyed or washed out by flooding. In total, the storm caused over $86 million and possibly as many as half a million fatalities. In April 1991, a tropical depression formed southwest of the Andaman Islands and continued towards the west, moving slowly at first as it dipped southwards. After over two days, the system developed into a tropical storm and now moved towards the northwest, accelerating for a short time before nearly stalling once more. Now heading north, the system continued to intensify and reached hurricane intensity. From here, the storm turned towards the north-northeast and continued steady intensification, peaking as a powerful Category 5 cyclone with sustained winds of 160 miles per hour and a central pressure of 918 millibars. The storm made landfall near Chittagong, just shy of Category 5 intensity. In Chittagong alone, it is believed that over 25,000 were killed. In other towns and villages, death tolls were equally staggering, caused mainly by the flooding. In total, the storm caused nearly $2 billion in damages and a total of nearly 140,000 fatalities. In November 2007, a tropical depression formed near the Nicobar Islands and moved towards the west-northwest, intensifying into Cyclone Sidur not long afterwards. Sidur edged westwards and 24 hours later attained winds of hurricane intensity. The storm then moved towards the north-northwest, intensifying fairly quickly and was a Category 4 storm far to the west of the Andaman Islands. Sidur continued towards the north through the Bay of Bengal and peaked as a destructive Category 5 cyclone, with sustained winds of 160 miles per hour and a central pressure of 944 millibars. Sidur made landfall in Bangladesh as a Category 4 cyclone causing a major storm surge and heavy rain. Strong winds destroyed many poorly built buildings and flattened or damaged innumerable amounts of trees. In total, the storm caused nearly $2 billion and killed approximately 10,000. Near the end of April 2008, a tropical depression formed in the Bay of Bengal and began its initially uncertain course, developing into Tropical Storm Nargis after 18 hours. 
The storm executed a counterclockwise loop as it reached hurricane intensity and then moved towards the northeast, weakening briefly before regaining its intensity. The storm now began to approach the coast of Myanmar, intensifying significantly before making landfall at its peak intensity as 130 mile per hour category 4 storm with a central pressure of 962 millibars. The storm moved inland and dissipated. Nargis was an extremely deadly storm and the worst disaster in Myanmar's history. Flooding and storm surge was highly prevalent along the southern coast of the country, which is where most of the damage and human losses occurred. In total, damages amounted to $10 billion and caused at least 145,000 fatalities, possibly even double that. In May 2009, a tropical depression formed in the Bay of Bengal and after stalling for a time, developed into Tropical Storm Ayla as it began to move towards the north-northwest. Turning now towards due north, Ayla approached the coast of Bangladesh, peaking as a Category 1 cyclone before it made landfall here. The storm caused severe flooding and a 10-foot storm surge along the coast, submerging a number of towns and villages. Ayla rendered hundreds of thousands homeless in both India and Bangladesh, where a total of 330 were reported dead. The storm also caused damages of over half a billion dollars. On the other side of India we have the Arabian Sea, a body of water that doesn't see as many cyclones as the Bay of Bengal, though can still produce some intense and damaging ones at that. Since 1972, 13 cyclones have made landfall along the western coast of India and Pakistan, including 7 tropical storms, 2 Category 1 cyclones, 1 Category 2 storm and 3 Category 3 major cyclones. Both the costliest and deadliest storm was Cyclone 3A in 1998, causing $3 billion in damages and over 10,000 fatalities. Cyclone FET in 2010 was the last storm to make landfall here. In early June 1998, a tropical depression formed near southwestern India and crossed the Lakadiv Islands as a tropical storm before weakening back to a tropical depression as it progressed slowly towards the west-northwest. The storm began to turn towards the northwest, attaining hurricane force winds eventually, and then continued to intensify as it continued northwards in the Arabian Sea, peaking twice as a Category 3 storm with sustained winds of 120 miles per hour and a central pressure of 958 millibars before making landfall in Gujarat and dissipating inland. 16 feet of storm surge came in with the storm, which crippled communications in the region and caused at least 10,000 fatalities, along with damages of $3 billion, mainly due to flooding. Eleven months later, in May 1999, a tropical depression formed in a similar region near the western coast of India. The system quickly developed into a tropical storm, the first in the Arabian Sea this year. The storm then advanced towards the northwest, following a similar path as the last storm, intensifying into a Category 3 cyclone, peaking with sustained winds of 125 miles per hour and a central air pressure of 946 millibars. The storm made landfall near this intensity after being a major cyclone for two days near Karachi, Pakistan, and dissipated inland. Heavy rains caused severe agricultural damage, and a total of 6,400 were believed to have been killed. Damages amounted to $6 million. In June 2007, a tropical depression formed in the Bay of Bengal and tracked westwards, making landfall in southern Andhra Pradesh without intensifying. The storm moved inland over India and continued towards the northwest, now a remnant low. However, the system made it to the Arabian Sea near the border with Pakistan and began to develop once more. From here, the system spent only a day over the Arabian Sea, but in that time developed into a 60 mile per hour tropical storm and was named Yemyan. The storm made landfall in Pakistan and weakened inland. In total, the storm caused 983 fatalities and damages amounting to over $2 billion. Our final region sees the western extent of the Arabian Sea where we have the land areas of the Arabian Peninsula and Somalia further south attached to the African continent. 
Due to the nature of the region, it is rare to see intense storms pose a threat to this area, and indeed they have been very few and far between. Since 1972, there have been 14 cyclone landfalls, 13 as tropical storms, and a single storm making landfall at Category 3 intensity. The costliest cyclone was Cyclone Gonu in 2007, causing $4.4 billion in damages, whilst the deadliest storm was Cyclone 3A this year, with 140 fatalities or more, possibly over 400. The last storm to make landfall was Cyclone 3A earlier this year, that was the aforementioned one that made landfall in Somalia. In June 1977, a tropical disturbance formed off the western coast of India and moved towards the northwest, becoming a tropical storm on the 10th. The cyclone then crossed the Arabian Sea east to west and peaked as a strong tropical storm on approach to Oman, though it may have been a significantly stronger Category 2 storm, as the Oman Meteorological Agency reported. The storm made landfall and rapidly weakened, dissipating shortly after moving over Oman. The storm caused between 105 and 110 fatalities and left 50,000 homeless. At the beginning of June 2007, a tropical depression formed in the eastern Arabian Sea and moved towards the west initially, developing into Tropical Storm Gonu after 18 hours. The storm continued westwards before turning towards the northeast and then back towards the northwest, intensifying without intermission. Gonu reached hurricane status and continued to intensify all the way until reaching its peak as the strongest storm to ever form in the Arabian Sea, with sustained winds of 165 miles per hour and a central air pressure of 920 millibars, a Category 5 cyclone. The storm then began to weaken as it made its approach towards Oman, pushing the eastern tip as a Category 2 storm. Gonu maintained hurricane intensity until halfway across the Gulf of Oman and made landfall in Iran just as it was dissipating. Gonu caused its heaviest damage in Oman and Iran, with adverse effects reported in Pakistan and the United Arab Emirates. The storm was responsible for 115 fatalities and damages amounting to $4.4 billion in total. At the end of May 2010, a tropical depression formed in the central Arabian Sea and proceeded towards the northwest slowly at first before accelerating somewhat as it became Tropical Storm Fet. Fet continued towards the Arabian Peninsula and rapidly intensified towards its peak intensity as a Category 4 cyclone with sustained winds of 145 miles per hour and a central air pressure of 970 millibars. Fet made landfall in Oman, still as a fairly strong storm, though weakening now, and emerged on the other side, still as a Category 1 storm, a status is subsequently lost hours later. Fet then turned and continued eastwards, holding on as a tropical storm until making a second landfall, as a depression in Pakistan dissipating inland. The storm caused major damage in Oman, with heavy rain falling in Pakistan and India too, causing 20 fatalities in those countries. Oman saw the biggest monetary loss with damages amounting to nearly $800 million and 24 fatalities occurring here, mainly due to rainfall and flooding.